This is the time of the harvest, saith the Lord. This is the time that I am asking you to bring forth fruit unto righteousness. This is the season of the harvest where God wants to come and put in the sickle and bring forth the full corn in the ear. I want to start in Mark chapter 4. My name is Sherry White and I'm coming to you from Fountain of Life Ministries International. Thank you for viewing. Uh, thank you for your support, your prayers. Uh, we appreciate those very much. They're encouraging to us. Let's go to Mark chapter 4. It says in verse 28, For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself. Now we know that we've got this treasure on the inside of us. If we've got Jesus in us, then we have a treasure in us, and he wants that to come forth. It says we are to bring forth the fruit of ourselves, first the blade, then the ear, and then the full corn in the ear. You know, that's where we are right now. God is calling forth his people to a higher level, to a higher standard, uh, if you will. And in the harvest time, there is the full corn in the ear. You know, God wants us to fulfill destiny and purpose. That's why he put us upon this earth uh, with a purpose. Every one of us has a purpose. Every one of you viewing this video has a purpose and a plan that God has for you. In Jeremiah 29, 11, it says that he has a plan for you and a future for you. And it is a good plan and a good future. But this is harvest time. You know, many times we think about harvest time as bringing in multitudes of people and uh, getting them saved and coming into the kingdom of God. And it certainly can be that type of harvest. But that's not what the Lord has placed in my spirit to bring to you uh, this day. This prophetic message uh, is calling forth a harvest in you. A harvest, the fruit of the spirit to come forth in you. You know, it says in 1 Corinthians 15 that Jesus was the first among many brethren. Let's go... Uh, well, hold your finger right there in Mark. I'm going to come back to Mark. But let's go over to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, starting in verse 20, and going down through 23. And it says here, But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Of course, it's talking about Jesus Christ. Let's go down to 23. But every man in his own order. Christ, the first fruit. See, Jesus Christ was the first fruit. He was offered up a sacrifice for all of mankind. And, and God the Father received him as the first fruit. After they that are Christ had at his coming. Then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and all power. For he must reign. Then he hath put all enemies under his feet. When Jesus Christ is ruling and reigning in your life, then the fruit will begin to come forth. The fruit of the Spirit. Uh, we, we'll turn there in just a few moments. But let's go back to Mark because I'm not finished there. In verse 29 of Mark 4, I'm talking about the harvest time. The harvest time has come when God wants to put in the sickle and bring forth the fruit. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately put it in the sickle. Who is that? That's the Lord. Because the harvest is come. We are the harvest of the Lord. Jesus Christ being the head of the church, the first fruit that came forth. And he is the first among many brethren. You know, and, uh, let's go over to Colossians uh, chapter 1 verse 18. All of Colossians is, is wonderful. I love Colossians. Uh, it says here in verse 18, 
and he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. You know, Jesus Christ is the head, and when he's ruling and he's reigning, then the Lord can put in the sickle and bring forth the harvest that is within us. Can you say amen? You know, in the book of Ruth, let's go back to the Old Testament for just a moment. In the book of Ruth, it is, this is an end time book. It talks about the harvest. It says that Naomi, uh, that Ruth followed Naomi back to the place where Naomi's brethren uh, were. And in this, and I'm going to, I want you to turn um, to chapter 1, verse 22. It says they came at a particular time uh, to uh, back to where Naomi was brought up and, and all of her brethren lived. It says, so Naomi returned and Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law, went with her, which returned out of the country of Moab, and they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of barley harvest. They came to Bethlehem. They came to Bethlehem. Bethlehem means the house of bread. They came to the house of bread in the harvest time. You know, we are to return to the house of the Lord. And I'm not talking about a building. I'm not talking about a denomination. I am talking about the presence of Almighty God. We are to return because why? It is harvest time. It is harvest time for you. It is harvest time for me. Oh, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just bring forth this message the way you want to bring it forth, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You know, it says in chapter 2 uh, that she gleaned. She gleaned in that field. Ruth gleaned in verse 17. It says, so she gleaned in the field until evening and beat out that she had gleaned. And it was about an ephraim of barley. And she took it up and went into the city. And her mother-in-law said, what, what, what have you gleaned? And she brought forth and gave it to her that she had reserved after she was, uh, was sufficed. And her mother-in-law said, where has thou gleaned this day? And, and Ruth told her, in the field of Boaz, I have, I have gleaned in that particular field. You know, and the Lord is saying to us today that we are to glean in his field. Where he tells us to glean, that's where we are to glean. And that's where we are to gather um, the, the grain, to gather the, 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 the harvest. Uh, thank you, Lord. It says in verse 23 of that same chapter, So she kept fast by the maidens of Boaz to glean unto the end of barley harvest and wheat harvest and dwelt with her mother-in-law. You know... There's so much in the book of Ruth. Uh, I, I can't uh, cover all of the book of Ruth today. But if you would like to read and just ask the Holy Spirit to show you the end time message that is in the book of Ruth. Because in chapter 3 she goes to the threshing floor. She goes where uh, Jesus is. And she offers herself, uh, she humbles herself. Uh, unto him. You know, and that's what we are to do in order to bring forth a harvest of fruit for the Lord. We are to offer ourselves a vessel of honor unto him. We are to surrender our lives unto him. We are to say, your will, not my will, Lord, uh, be done in this matter. And she went, Ruth went, and she laid at the feet of Boaz. And, uh, and when he woke up, you know, there she was. And, um, and in verse 11 of chapter 3, it says, And now, my daughter, fear not. I will do to thee all that thou requires. For all the city of my people doth know that thou art a virtuous woman, a powerful woman. You know, and this is a picture of the church today, the, the living church, the church of the living God. The glorious church is full of power and authority in the land. And as we bring forth the harvest unto the Lord, then he is going to put that sickle in 
and he's going to to reap that harvest uh, of us. You know, in the book of Joel, and I know that I have to um, quickly uh, hurry here, but in the book of Joel, it says, uh, let's go to chapter 1 of, of Joel, verse 11. I get excited about the harvest because I know that the harvest is great and the laborers are few. You know, that's what it says uh, in, um, in the scripture, that the harvest is great. In Luke chapter 10, verse 2, it says, Great is the harvest and the laborers are few. Um, and pray to the Lord of the harvest. And who is the Lord of the harvest? But the Father himself. It says in verse 11, uh, be ashamed, O you husbandmen, howl, O you vine dressers, for the wheat and for the barley, because the harvest of the field is perishing. You know, and that's what we, we, we don't want the fields to perish. We want our earth to produce the fruit that God is calling for. You know, the fruit of the Spirit, joy and peace and love and long-suffering, uh, meekness and faith, He wants us to bring forth all of that that fruit. You know, in in Luke chapter 10, verse 2, I just quoted that scripture, great is the harvest, but the laborers are few. You know, and, and many people are working, and they're doing a good work, but they're not doing a God work. Because in Hebrews, it says that we are to labor to enter into his rest. That Let's turn over and put our eyes on it. It says that we are to labor and we know that we are co-laborers with Jesus Christ. But it says here that we are in verse 3 of chapter 4 of Hebrews. It says, For we which have believed do enter into his rest. And he said, As I have sworn in my wrath, if you shall enter into my rest, although the work were finished from the foundations of the, of the world, we are to labor to enter into that rest. Uh, I believe that's in, uh, um, let's see, I'm looking for the particular verse here that I'm trying to, um, to, to read into you. It says in uh, chapter 3, uh, verse 18, And to whom swear he that he should not enter into his rest, but to them that believe not. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. You know, this is, this is why the, the children of Israel did not come into the promises of God. It's because they did not labor to enter into his rest. But we know that in chapter 4, it says that that's what we labor for. Uh, it says the harvest is great, but the laborers are few. There's few that want to enter into the rest of God. There's few that want to come into his presence and let him put in the sickle and bring forth the fruit um, because the harvest is great and the laborers are few. You know, in Revelation 1, 11, Jesus said, I am the first and the last. I am the alpha and I am the omega. And he is the alpha of your faith and he is the omega. He's the beginning of your faith and the end of your faith. He is the beginning of your life and the end of your life. He is the beginning of your ministry and the end of your ministry. He is the Alpha and the Omega of every situation in your life. Right now, I want to pray that you enter into the rest of God. That when the Lord comes to you, He will put in the sickle and He will bring forth the fruit of the harvest. And as we are harvested and we bring forth that full corn, in the ear. What is that talking about? That's the full stature of Jesus Christ. That the Lord will see that you're ready to harvest. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we, I pray for every person who has a, um, a sickness or a disease in their body, that it be dried up by the, by the fire of God and burned up and disappear in Jesus' name. Those of you, there's a woman who has a... a uh, a lump in her in her left breast, and the Lord is saying that He is He is touching that right now and disintegrating it. And when you go back for another uh, test, it will not be there. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, I see a small child that has uh, ADD, 
and the Lord is touching that child's brain and causing the the brain to to function properly, causing that child to be able to concentrate and learn uh, from from the the schoolwork and the the teachers that he has. And in Jesus' name, I just speak healing uh, to that child. Uh, I just also speak healing to lungs and emphysema. Uh, those of you that have a difficulty with your breathing, uh, the Lord right now is opening up those passages uh, and 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 bringing breath unto you, a freshness of breath. Uh, there is a person who's been very discouraged and frustrated uh, with the things in your life, um, relationships, and, and things are just not going the way you think they should go. And the Lord was saying to you, fret not for evildoers, for they shall wither as the green herb. Uh, the evildoers are, are, are leaving. The evildoers are fleeing from you. Um, in Jesus' name, I encourage you this day to know that you are the harvest of the Lord and that he wants to harvest you and, and bring forth that fruit uh, in Jesus' name. Thank you for viewing today.